The business and fleet market can be a tough nut to crack, with competition ranging from everything like the Vauxhall Insignia to the Mercedes C-Class. So what about the Hyundai i40? For 2015, Hyundai updated its i40 range with some exterior tweaks, making it look more modern and stylish, and it rejigged its engines and transmissions. So let's see what it's got to offer. The i40's interior has obvious traits of Hyundai about it, with this funnel-like dashboard design that houses all the bells and whistles and the brand's unmistakable blue lighting, which looks particularly cool at night. Equipment across the range lives up to the brand's reputation for high kit levels, as every model gets Bluetooth and USB connectivity, a leather-wrapped steering wheel with convenient audio controls and 16-inch alloy wheels. The SE Nav model that we have is great for those who want to be munching up motorway miles, as it comes with a touchscreen sat nav system, which also has a rear view camera, cruise control with a speed limiter, and heated seats. Its seating position goes hand in hand with its cruiser personality, as there's plenty of adjustments and the seats really hug you in place, which is great for long trips. One thing I will say is that the chunky C pillars do obstruct your vision a bit. Although you're unlikely to have a car full of passengers, the i40 is more than capable. As you can see, leg room is absolutely enormous. And thankfully, the slightly sloping roof doesn't impede on headroom too much either. But does all this leg room threaten boot space? Nope, not one bit. There's 553 litres on offer with the seats up, trumping its Insignia Sports Tourer and Mondeo Estate Rivals, and 1,719 litres with the seats folded down. The only problem is these seats don't quite fall completely flat, which is worth noting if you travel up and down the country with a bike or plenty of luggage or a surfboard. Motorway cruisers don't necessarily have to be amazing in the handling department, because let's be honest, the majority of your time is going to be spent going in a straight line anyway. But the i40 has good levels of responsiveness and speed sensitive power steering which gives it a bit more character because the weighting can adjust accordingly its drive definitely offers more predictability and confidence than the Vauxhall insignia but the ford mondeo estate still has the edge when it comes to agility as long journeys will no doubt be on the itinerary the supple suspension of the i40 will serve you well as it masks lumps and bumps in the road but loud thumping sounds will still make it into the cabin the 1.7 litre diesel available comes with two power outputs, 113 and 139 brake horsepower. The 139 brake horsepower unit we're driving will return an average of around 50 miles per gallon in real world driving and emits 114 grams per kilometre of CO2. But the most notable element of the diesel is its coupling with the new 7 speed dual clutch transmission. Once you get going, this gearbox is very smooth accelerating through the gears. But when you're stuck in traffic or you're edging out at junctions, it can be a bit jolty and it takes some serious getting used to. But with that said, the i40 is incredibly smooth and comfortable all round. So much so, you get to the end of your journey so relaxed, you feel like taking a bath or reading a book. Each to their own, I suppose. Priced at £1,250 more than the i40 saloon, the Tourer model sits in between its Ford and Vauxhall rivals at just under £21,000. And you know what? When it comes to driving dynamics and interior quality, it sits comfortably in between those two models as well. But let's not forget its five-year unlimited mileage warranty, which will be a particularly enticing proposition for those who are after a cruiser. But what do you think of the i40? Let us know in the comments section below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. To research your next car and find great deals, visit carkeys.co.uk and to watch more reviews, click on the links at the end of the video.